Hello, and welcome back to my channel. This is a lot later than intended because I got sick, but today I'm doing a lot better, so I figured I'd just finish this up. So if I sound tired and just bleh, that's why. Besides that, let's get started. First off, I'd like to make a brand new template for almost every pair I make. After studying multiple pictures of rats, I decided it would be best to freehand this template. I labeled and cut out the template to ensure I don't throw it away on accident, thinking it was a random piece of cardboard. After combing through all of the white fur, I started tracing around my template. I left at least a quarter inch of seam allowance around the template when drawing to make the future steps easier. I labeled the pieces with A and B so I could match them together later. Remember, if you're following along with me, keep careful track of the natural direction that the fur follows. It will entirely change how the final outcome looks. For this set, the fur direction is upwards. I very carefully parted the fur with a slicker brush. I just barely dampened it to encourage a cleaner part, then cut directly along it so I had a smaller textile to work with. Off camera, I cut all my pieces out because this takes me a long time. I took my EVA foam? EVA foam? Does anyone know how to pronounce that? Anyways, I traced around the template as closely to the edge as I could. I cut out and labeled both pieces. Then it was time to turn my EVA foam pieces into the inner skeletons for the ears. A lot of people like to use jewelry wire, but I feel it's easier, more efficient, and a thousand times cheaper to use Christmas ornament hooks. That way the pieces are pre-cut and easier to bend into shape around the edges. Plus, the wire is extremely thin and very malleable with your fingers. It's a great alternative for those of you who don't have the money to be purchasing all of the materials. I took each piece and, using both pliers and my fingers, I carefully bent them into place. I used as little hot glue as possible to just barely fasten them around the edges because I needed the skeletons to have no extra bulk. Plus, they'll be fully attached later. Then, on the side where I have markings, I attached some pieces straight across. I trimmed the wires to fit, and with the excess pieces, I created a cross shape in the middle. This is to make the ears as adjustable as possible, and so they keep their shape. The extra back wires also make them easier to bend, which can be important if your headbands aren't the strongest. For these wires, I fully hot glued them because I won't be going back over them. Once I had my skeletons, I started hot gluing my fur pieces around them. I normally have to go over the seams a couple times to make sure it's closed all the way around. Then I trimmed all the excess off as closely as I can without exposing the skeleton. I accidentally trimmed all the fur just out of frame like an idiot, so I cut that out. I will hopefully have a better view of trimming another pair in the future, but for that I apologize. However, next up it was time to do some concept sketches to see how I wanted these painted. The theme for these rat ears was the video game Portal. So I looked up some images from the game to use for inspiration and to pick the exact colors I wanted. I wanted to leave the ears mostly white for that clean open lab feel, and for the colored parts to have clean lines between the white and colored sections. I also wanted an ombre from the darkest to lightest colors. However, this didn't feel like it was enough to make them portal themed. 
I added a little icon guy on each ear, but later would decide that I wanted him on the back sides of the ears. I also decided later during the painting process that I wanted to add little portals on the back sides. With my design in mind, I started painting, dry brushing with airbrush paints because an airbrush is slightly outside my price range. I mixed my darkest orange color and added airbrush paint thinner to it. I painted in layers to add a slight ombre effect, parting the sections carefully with a slicker brush so I could evenly coat each of the strands. After painting both the front and back, I add a couple more drops of yellow paint into my orange mixture, then repeat. Once I was finished with the longer sections of fur, I painted along the seam line with my lightest orange. Then I repeated the entire process on the other ear in light blue. On the back, I traced another tiny template made of cardboard in an oval shape. After shaving the fur down on the backs to match that oval shape, I painted around them to make a glow effect and to just add some color. Then I took a piece of extremely shiny paper and used that same template to cut out two little portals. After painting around the edges of them, I hot glued them inside those flat spots on the back sides of the ears. To finish them off, I painted the little icon man on each coming outside of the portal. After piercing both pairs with a clean, thick sewing needle and gluing on rhinestones and Shavorsky crystals, I carefully attached them to a headband via hot glue and the wire bits from the bottom of the ears. For the finishing touches, I decided to make two little matching hair bows, one orange and one blue, both with a sparkly white face. I left a little loop of ribbon at the bottom of both for the charm to attach to, which I will show off in just a moment. The charms are two little handmade companion cube charms made from air dry clay. Each were attached to a little jewelry clip via a small loop of ribbon, covered by these teeny tiny bows I made. After the hair bows were attached to alligator clips, this set was finally finished. 
The total time it took was around 14 hours, so remember that your effort really does count over everything else. I hope I'm able to get better at doing this quickly in the future. Everyone remember to have a lovely day, thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time. Bye bye